Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane. We're here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And this has been a beautiful week. I know we got a little front coming through and there's some moisture. But as we get into March, as we warm up, warmer and warmer, I mean, hasn't it been nice? We could walk around this week with no jacket on. Or light jacket or less layers. It was really nice. Spent, we're relaying out the garden center. So now through uh, to second, third week in March, we are just diligently setting up. Um, I mean, hundreds of fruit trees showed up. Huge maples just showed up. I mean, roses, fruit, vegetable. It just, it's constant. It's this flow. And it's a pain to set all that up. Uh, to, to to merchandise an entire two acres of garden center and it's cold out it's just not fun it's nicer to be out there when you can go out layers and just easier on us it's just it's just better and so that's been this kind of week it's been a delight hasn't it been nice to to walk the dogs to go out biking it's just that's why we live in the mountains of arizona i was talking to some friends up in michigan at own garden centers, actually in the Four Corners area. Uh, of they, They've got uh, Four Seasons Garden Center, 18 inches of snow on the ground yet. It's melting fast, but still they're just buried. Here it's all melted off. It just feels good. It feels like spring is in the air. The beautiful thing is we're not done with the weather, so so it's still winter, but you're starting to see the daffodils are starting to bloom. I posted on our Instagram account. Uh, our Instagram, we, we had a, a, the winter blooming jasmines are in full bloom. The viburnums are cracking and showing color. The tulips are up, not in bloom yet, but about to. It's the leading edge of the, the spring season is here. And so if we get some more weather, like this weekend, if it does snow, it will melt almost immediately. And so it won't be the harshest of the cold. We're not going to get a deep freeze anymore at this point. So you can start putting in the ground your spring bloomers, your forsythias and lilacs and quince and viburnums and all of that. You can put in your hedges like junipers and, and red tip photinias and euonymus and catoniasters. We have all those in the garden center now ready to plant. And the beautiful part is, the ground is so easy to work right now. Oh, it's such a delight. You wait until June, end of May, and the ground, you need a jackhammer. It's just, that's what it's going to come down to. You also, if you're planting now, that's why you want to take the steps now. It's easier on you to dig a hole, but if you don't amend that soil to, to enrich it, to keep it from compacting right back down to its concrete base to its caliche layer, it will turn into that hard pan again in May and June. But if you're working the soil right now and you add in a bag or so of compost, of, of we call it premium mulch, it prevents that soil from compacting back down and allows the roots, allows the worms, allows uh, just nature to start taking hold around that root mass of that new tree or shrub, or bulbs, or flowers, or whatever. It's important. Just because it's easy to dig now does not mean that it won't turn into hard as rock later, not just for you, but also for that new tree or shrub you put in the ground. And so we had these uh, just spectacular uh, maples come in, red maples. They're, they're stunning. They're huge. The trunks on them are bigger than your arm. I mean, they're, they're standing 15 feet tall. They're instantaneous trees. If you were to take that home and just put it in the ground and not amend the soil around that, you would be doing that tree a, a, a disservice. I mean, you're putting a big tree like that in because you want instantaneous. You don't want to wait. You want it to be, you want it to be in the ground and look like something now. And, and it's not leafed out yet, but it's a stunning big trunk of a tree. It's beautiful. But you also want it to root in very quickly, immediately. And if it doesn't, 
it will leaf out a tree that big. I mean, it's got a canopy that's like a, a sail on a, on a ship. It's humongous. When that thing leafs out and starts to catch the wind coming through that canopy layer, it will lay over and, and fall out of the ground possibly. So you want to stake it, and then you want to encourage it to root right away. And the way to do that is the hole's easy digging right now. And it will be easy rooting later as long as you amend that soil around the root ball. And so when we're planting, we always dig it. Let's say you're having our crew to come out. And a big tree like that, you, you want someone else to, to bring it out. You want someone else to manhandle it. You want someone else to plant it for you. I mean, even I have the crew come out to my house when I'm putting in big aspens or big maples, you know, big spruce, big trees. I'll have our crew come out and plant it for me doesn't cost that much really and it includes everything but if you're planting that let's say we're coming out to plant for you we'll dig the hole only as deep as the root ball roots do not go down here in the mountains of arizona they go out there's nothing down there for them to go after there's no water there's no nutrients there's, there's nothing just more clay and caliche and cinders and everything nasty for a tree or a shrub but they do grow sideways. So roots, these roots put on a kind of a hockey stick. It goes down a couple feet, hooks a 90 degree, and just starts running across the yard, picking up the nutrients and the water that forms throughout your landscape. So if you've got a fairly mature landscape, probably that spruce tree or that pine that's sitting out there, it probably has roots, not down in China, but it probably has roots going all the way through your front landscape in your front flower beds, in the neighbor's lawn. In the, it's got roots going everywhere because that's where the nutrients and the moisture is in a dry climate where we have very alkaline soil and alkaline water and hard pan underneath. That's how they naturally grow. If you know that's how a tree and shrub are naturally going to grow, encourage it to grow like that. Don't have it go counterintuitive to what it naturally wants to do. And so we'll usually dig a hole as deep as the tree, or the root, but three times the width. So that one big maple I was talking about, that has a, I don't know, two feet tall by three foot wide root. I mean, it's, it's pretty massive. It's, it's a big tree. And so there we would dig a hole that's four or five feet wide and only a couple feet deep, kind of saucer shape. And we would heavily amend that earth that we're going to backfill around that root ball. So it will encourage it to root. Then we'll sprinkle some fertilizer on it, mild organic fertilizer, to encourage the nutrients, to, to encourage this tree to go, wow, this, this, this yard's really got it going on. This is great. I'm going to start growing right here. And it starts rooting out, taking off, leafing out. Then we'll water it in with a liquid root and grow. It's, it's, a, it's a rooting hormone. So a secret in kind of the insider horticulturalist's view of plants. Here's how plants really grow. As they flush new growth in spring, right after that, almost immediately, at the same time, really, they'll also flush a whole other set of root growth. So spring is a tremendous opportunity to plant something and get it to root out very quickly because of this pattern of foliage roots, foliage roots. And there's a direct correlation there. And the more foliage you have, the more roots you can gain on that tree. That's why spring is such a good time, especially before things leaf out. This is a tremendous time to put new fruit trees in, new grapes, new uh, things that produce a lot of flowers or a lot of fruit. This is the time to plant them. I mean, just, just perfect. Wait till this wet pattern leaves and just be right out there and go after it. And folks will go, well, it might, it might snow again. I guarantee you it will. At least one time it'll be a flash you know, a couple inches, then it will melt off by the end of the day. But if you put things in the ground before that happens and they just wake up on our natural cycle out in the landscape, you're perfectly fine. That's good. You want to get plants in the ground so that they wake up when all the other fruit trees, all the other plums or pears or apricots or whatever it is, apples, wake up. You want to put your grapes in so they wake up when all the other grapes in the community, wake up. And so that's the insider tip on that. This is also a great time to put your early spring vegetables and flowers in. We got a whole boatload, truckload of 
lettuce and, and broccoli and cauliflower. The onions are here. The garlic is here. The, it's, it's time to get that soil ready and start planting. Be right back. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters Garden companion plants in February are peony, Calgary carpet juniper, lily of the valley, and pinion pines. Pinion pine have thick evergreen needles providing year-round beauty and summer shade. It's a local native that blend equally well in a modern or Mediterranean style landscape. Go ahead, enjoy the buttery rich pine nuts from your own backyard. You'll have plenty of nuts and pine, our deer and javelina proof. Shop the most trees in Prescott by store or online at watersgardencenter.com. Let's talk poop. Hey, I'm Tommy at Waters Garden Center. Ken and Lisa are out right now, so I snuck in to remind you that it's time to add some manure to your garden. It's been a wet winter and your soil is well pooped. Waters Barnyard Manure adds nutrients to get your garden growing. It's organic and orderless. So we really can say our poop don't stink. Buy six bags or more. They're only $5.99. Now that's a load of crap. Tommy, what's going on? Oh, poop, gotta go. Natural, safe, odorless, and organic at Waters Garden Center. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. So we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about? And lots of gardeners are coming in now. So mm-hmm. we're seeing them at the garden center in between cold and warm. And every time it's above like 55, yeah. there's a flood of the, the parking lot starts to fill. Otherwise, it's like, where is everyone? Echo, echo. <laughs> <laughs> you get projects done. <laughs> you get to spend lots of time. If you want great service. At a garden center, go in, in the morning or when it's a little cold, any kind of a cloud is in the sky. That's enough <laughs> to keep Prescottonians from uh, showing up or going outside for the day. Yes. So, but you get extra mm-hmm. energy, time, focus. Oh, you bet. So, anyway, it's just a good time. So, yeah. welcome back to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Good what kind here. of garden questions we got this week? Well, you bet. So, Shannon in Prescott wants to know when is the best time to plant peonies? Oh. And can they go into a full sun spot? Oh, sure, Shannon. Hey, great question. So peonies are, they're a spring uh, a perennial. That is, they come back every year and they get this beautiful, great big, like rose sized flower to it. Typically have more petals than a rose and super fragrant. That peony fragrance is over the top. They get about, what is knee high or so? I guess it depends on the model. So the English... <laughs> English peonies get about yeah. knee high or so. Right. And the more sun you give a peony, the better, the more flowers you'll get. So there's a photosynthesis thing that, that happens. So um, some of the really big ones I notice, like the Ito peonies, these are, we've grafted a tree peony, no, a, an English peony onto a tree peony root. Mm-hmm. And so you get this big, it's like a it's like an English peony on steroids. It's real. The flowers are three times the size. They're they're huge and they're funky colors, like mm-hmm. yellows. You just don't see yellow right. in a peony, but you do with Etos. Mm-hmm. Some of those sometimes they'll take full sun, but their pat the the leaves are so big. That sometimes they benefit from uh, a little protection underneath the tree or something. Not really for the flower, but it keeps the summer hail off of the foliage it's not going to make any real difference to the flowers and stuff but Mm -hmm. i would say give it at least six hours of sun a peony needs at least six hours of sun to just to produce any kind of flower otherwise they'll tend to lean and kind of fall over and stuff and they'll need a cage and all this other stuff you and i we grow some ito peonies in containers Mm -hmm. of all things and they've been in there for years they're beautiful on a south facing wall a up against the house reflective heat it's glorious. Yeah. So they'll take full sun. Uh, and now's the time. So you want to get peonies in before they really start to erupt. Their, their eyes are starting to show from the bucket. So they're, they hibernate underground and then they'll come back fresh um, every spring. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. So where's my cough button? And so uh, <laughs> you can't cough anymore, even on the radio. <laughs> anyway, they're, um, 
their eyes are just starting to show up. You want to grab those early. You get best selection. Like we just had our first crop of peonies. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's, I don't know, 50 or 60 of them. I don't know. There's a bunch just table filled with them. And, and then uh, in a couple of weeks, I think I read an article on how to grow peonies. And then that weekend, it'll just be like this flood. They'll all be <laughs> gone because the crop is limited. And mm -hmm. so you kind of want better selection. You grab them early. Don't wait until they're in bloom. I'm going to wait till I see the flowers. There won't be any left by then. So those you want to shop early, mm -hmm. get them in the ground, and then you'll have less transplant shock as right. they as they grow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm now. Gonna give one other, I, can yes. I give one other Shan to Shannon because she's growing them? Um, drainage, drainage, drainage. Oh, Peonies yeah. have this real fleshy root, which is why they're so robust. Mm -hmm. Make sure that soil drains. And so that's, that's kind of personal advice. Just no, school that's of hard true. knocks. That's, that's very good advice. <laughs> very good advice. Okay. So Dan is in Chino. He's put in a raised garden bed for vegetables. It's about three feet tall. Ooh, His question is, because he doesn't want to You're going to have to climb up into the bed. <laughs> His question is, for the bottom part of that, can yeah. you just put in crummy fill soil? Or is it? do you need to do the whole thing with good soil? Yeah, so... No, I would not put crummy. You don't, the reason you have a raised bed, come on, Dan, the reason you got a raised bed is because your soil is so rough. Those new subdivisions out in Chino Valley, they're beautiful. The vistas are gorgeous. The dirt is horrible, just terrible. I don't know how you grow anything in there. Uh, and so you're abandoning that soil so that you can have good, better soil, better drainage. And so don't curse yourself by refilling that thing with crummy soil. Now, some of your rock yards, mm -hmm. they've got what's called a garden mix. Okay, it's silt. They're sticking it, they're digging out stock tanks because that's we're in ranch country. And so they got this rich silt, which mm -hmm. doesn't drain. So they add wood chips and manure to it because those are both free products. And they call it garden mix. It's terrible to grow in, <laughs> but it's great filler. Mm -hmm. I would get a load of <clears throat> garden mix from any any of your your soil folks. Mm -hmm. Um, there's plenty in Chino. Just get them anywhere. And then I would take the top layer of that and I would add that top layer. I would I would put water's potting soil. Our grower came up with that and it's it's our grower's mix. So it's cutting seed, things that are started will start that in that, that mix. And plants don't like a difference. They don't like different soils. And so make sure you have the same kind of soil, that seedling, you were, you were, you're the, the starter mix. Mm -hmm. That same starter plant goes into the same kind of soil and it'll just take off and grow for you. So I would take that top six, eight inches of that raised bed and put water's potting soil because you're going to get a hundred percent growth rate. They're just going to grow. You could add your seed, your radishes right in there, probably start right now. And you you'd get radishes in like three weeks. They grow so fast. Lettuce mm -hmm. the same way. So take the top layer and have really good stuff. The filler with just a garden mix. Did I help Dan out? Did they cover everything? I think yeah. so. So okay. if they if they do a good six to eight inches of good soil on yeah. top, like the water's potting soil, yeah. you really don't need to add anything else to that, no. right? No. You're just good to go. Yeah. So, but if you're doing a so a bed that's been in the ground three, four, you know, years, yeah. you've been planting in it, then you would want to add like manures, perlites, those kind of things. Yeah, for, for a brand new bed. So he's just filling up a three foot right. bed, and he needs a lot of soil. Yeah. So that was advice for Dan, sure. Chino Valley. Uh, for those that already have raised beds and you want to freshen that up, plants use up the soil that they're growing in so that you'll actually see the soil disappear. It doesn't yeah. blow away. It actually just disappears because mm -hmm. the plants are using the energy out of that soil. Okay. Well, as, as it takes from the soil, you need to replenish that for the next year's crop. So every year you're probably topping that bed off with water's potting soil. It's peat moss, perlite. It's, it's all the good stuff you want in a soil mix. Mm -hmm. um, you can add it for really big beds, manure, 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 manure is great. We have a barnyard manure to deodorize. Let's face it, folks. <laughs> poop is gross. Let's just face it. We created a poop that isn't gross. It's like a compost, <laughs> but it's still got the <laughs> nitrogen. It's got, still got that vitality stuff. stuff. And so you could put a two inch layer on top of that raised garden bed or any garden bed, whatever it is, Blend it down to one shovel's depth, about eight inches or so. 
I would at the same time add some fertilizer, some plant food. We make a, a fruit and vegetable food that's designed specifically for growing fruits and vegetables. It's got a lot of calcium in it. Mm -hmm. And so I would, before I blend it, I would put my manure down about a two inch layer uh, and then, then a, sprinkle some of this vegetable food on top, then take your shovel, turn it back and forth. And then you're, you're ready to start planting. Mm -hmm. I would say you could start planting. I mean, the weather's going to turn nice by March. I mean, yeah, we'll get some cold nights where it goes down to mid twenties, but it pops right back up right. really quick to warm. So plants are they're actively growing right now. Mm -hmm. So I would say you can go for it. Yeah. And we do have a lot of our, our uh, spring veggies. And yeah, they're, so the they're kale, in herbs. Got some beautiful Swiss chard yeah. up there. It's so pretty. <laughs> so a lot of stuff you can put in now if your beds are ready. And that way you can enjoy it in spring. Two, uh, two questions this week. We're out of time. So we've got uh, peonies with uh, Shannon and raised beds for Dan. Yeah. Appreciate the questions, you folks. Be right back right after this. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Some stores are meant to dash into, hunt down your purchase, and leave promptly. It's part of our 24-7 cyber world where it's difficult to decompress, slow down, and enjoy the environment. We miss the tactile experiences, fragrance, and enjoyment that come from slowing down and admiring the majesty of something as simple as a butterfly. Waters has elevated lingering to an art form with experiential pauses built into the very DNA of the garden center. We're designed purposefully for leisurely strolls through the many greenhouses that beckon guests to enjoy the plants. We work tirelessly to craft an environment that aesthetically reflects the cycle of the seasons. When you finally have a plant question, one of Waters' plant ambassadors are here to help you choose plants that will thrive in your landscape. Decompress and learn how to linger in the garden once again here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. Thought I would cover the, the insider tip of secrets to raised garden beds. So whether it's made out of timbers, redwood, cedar, uh, retaining block, cinder block, whatever, sometimes your yard is not worth gardening in. So you need to abandon thinking, putting things in the ground in the backyard. And so we create this, this holding, a, a huge container is what we're really doing. And then we're filling this, this space with good soil. It's a way to have a large space with very good garden soil. So I'd cover some of those tips, kind of the 10 things that really make a difference. And, and the biggest advice I can give you, and that's whether it's a raised bed or, or out there in the yard in the garden, a flower bed, a vegetable bed, whatever kind of raised garden soil you have, the number one thing is don't walk. Don't ever, ever walk on your soil. You'll compact it down. You squish it. It stays like that. You want to keep that soil light and fluffy. So when you turn it, and, and, and get some more nutrients or some more compost or try not to step all over that nice new fluffy soil. It compacts back down to where the, the, the ground, the roots can't get through the ground. And so in my own raised beds, what I do is I've got some stepping stones that I place if I need to get further back into that garden bed. I'll place those stepping stones so that I can step from that stone to this stone to, and, and get through the garden without stepping on the soil. You can use straw down the aisles. There's different ways to do it, but the main thing is don't be don't be walking back and forth over the area that you'll be putting tomatoes and cucumbers and lettuce and carrots into because it does affect their root formation. The beautiful thing about raised gardens is you can really strategize. You can plan your irrigation. So soaker hose, I've used soaker hoses before. Just that they make a, a hose that's made out of basically chewed up tires. And so when you run water through it, it seeps or weeps out throughout up and down this, this hose. 
I've, I've sort of abandoned that in my own gardens and I use drip irrigation. So I'm very focused because I want to be efficient on my water use. It's good for the environment. It's good for my wallet. It's easier on the plants and I can plan things. But if you really think through that irrigation, you can go on that three week cruise around Tahiti and go through the Panama Canal and you come back home and your plants are alive and even, even larger than when you left. The irrigation is right. So third is keep the weeds out. Oh, this is the biggie for raised beds. You can keep the gophers from coming up underneath and eating the roots. You can keep the weeds from coming down simply by putting chicken wire at the bottom of this raised bed. Whatever your mechanism is, line it. So keep the squirrels, the the, the rodents out from, from underneath that, that root structure. And you can put a weed fabric underneath that to keep the trees from growing in or keep the weeds from popping up. So it's real easy before you fill it, just line the bottom of it to keep the weeds and vermin out. Really makes a difference. That, and I've had a couple back surgeries where it's just harder for me to get on the ground. And so my raised beds are up two block high plus a, a capstone. So it's up about 18, 24 inches. It's very easy for me to sit down and garden right there on the ledge. I'm using retainer blocks. I, I go over to Yavapai Block over off Sundog Ranch Road. They're the manufacturer in Yavapai County or the Central Highlands area, and they make the block right there. And so I go down there. It's a little bit more substantial block, a little harder to deal with, but it doesn't move. It stays right where you put it. And so some of your box stores, it's a tiny little, they're going for price point, not quality. And so these little blocks, they move around. So you're always resetting them. They're kind of a pain actually. So go, I would say get know who your local manufacturer is in, in town. It's Yavapai Block for pavers and retaining block, that kind of stuff. I mean, they do septic tanks. Anything with cement, they make it right there. You can get in different colors. It matches you. You can get pavers to go with it, that kind of stuff. So I go there, and, and, and they're up at basically sitting height because of my back. It just makes it easier for me. I think that's important as you get older. It just you got to think those things through, and I'm not that old, but I've had I own a garden center, so I've had two back surgeries. If everyone goes, this is such a beautiful place. Oh, it's so nice, but in reality, we're dirt dealers. We just have beautiful things erupting out of the. We've got green thumbs. We've plugged to these things, and they're growing. But the the cans can be after you've loaded a hundred of them that day, or a huge tree, it can wear on you. So, anyway, that's that's. Make the material whatever you want. I would say if you're doing vegetables too, I wouldn't use things that are treated like your treated timbers or your railroad ties because that creosote they, they permeate that the lumber with can get into the soil and be absorbed by your, by your edibles. Whether you're growing grapes in there or lettuce or tomatoes or cucumber, whatever, it can. There, we've seen that, that it can actually seep into the plants. So whereas concrete or redwood and some of the other products can't do that or don't do that. That's kind of another kind of insight, way to think it through beforehand. Flowers, I don't care. doesn't matter. But you kind of want to have the flexibility to, to do either, don't you? I've got more. Let me try to get to maybe segment five. We'll get into that. But Lisa Waters Lane's waiting to get in the studio. Be right back. Don't change that dial. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Waters Garden Companion plants in February are Peony, Lily of the Valley, Pinion Pines, and Calgary Carpet Juniper. Calgary Carpet Juniper shows rich green mounds of juniper beauty that grows ankle high for the perfect ground cover. An ideal choice for low water, low care erosion control on natural banks or to soften that rock lawn. The perfect green nestled between boulders or to soften the top edge of a retaining wall. Shop for these juniper beauties in Prescott by store or online at watersgardencenter.com. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. 
You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. We are back in the studio with Elisa Waters Lane here each week. She takes this segment and just makes us all smarter as far as gardening goes. So <laughs> I, I just feel that. like, like plus it takes some pressure off of me. So I don't feel the entire hour and I get to spend 10 minutes. Oh, maybe more than that with you in a, in a little studio room here at the mm-hmm. garden center, which I love. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I do too, dear. Uh, that's what I wanted. That's what every man wants to hear. Okay. Anyway, uh, what do you got for us this week? What are you? Where, what are you going? What's what's the direction? Well, I feel you know that song at Christmas that it's beginning to look a lot like yeah. Christmas. Yeah. I feel like you should sing that for spring here. It's beginning to look a lot like spring. We yeah. have had multiple trucks in. Um, so we're a little tired, a little dingy from that. Nah, we're all good. It's what we live for. <laughs> it is. It is. It's just so exciting to get all the stuff in. You're like, ooh, we got that. Ooh, we got this. Oh, this is new. So it's just, it's a fun time of year to be in the garden center because it's all fresh and new and exciting. To give you an idea of perspective, folks. So there's been so many trucks. So that's me think here. We've had not quite a football field. Think a semi-tractor trailer times a football field. It's just shy of that, that many feet. And it's stacked from floor to that entire eight foot ceiling Mm -hmm. packed with dirt and plants. Mm -hmm. So it's spread out over, we're trying to fill up two acres of, of, of garden center. And so it takes, it takes a lot. So we still, we probably have another, I don't know, three or four and all the while people are coming and buying it. So it's like, they yeah. see, they like know it's coming. So they're, they're tagging onto it. So you're trying to fill it up while people are buying it. So you okay. bring more in. It's what we live for, but right. it's kind of, the, that's the energy of spring. Mm-hmm. So for garden centers, most retailers, it's Christmas and Black Friday. It's just, it's right. here. It's for, it's, it's garden center. It's spring. It's March and April mm-hmm. kind of gets us going. So it's fun. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. So a couple of things that are actually on the premise. I've talked about them before, but it's like, they landed. Yeah quite sure until they show up but they did show up so the f- the flamethrower uh red bed <laughs> having a brain well, don't take about don't talk about those <laughs> we only have 15 of them they'll be gone instantly talk about the other regular well, regular we got, old red we got beds. all the old we got the oklahoma merlot yeah. uh geez, there's like five there's or six a weeping different, one yep a there's weeping all kinds one. Yeah. Uh, but the coolest newest one is the flamethrower so that one has kind of what makes it different it blooms out the same that real dark pink blossom but it, the leaves on it go from like a yellowish to green to orange all on the same branch like a flamethrower right. <laughs> hence the name but pretty cool. I'm excited to see them leaf out. Of course, they're dormant right now. Right. And I'm Buds excited to see them bloom. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then and then bud out. I mean, leaf out. That'll be really fun. So yeah. red buds, they're native for here. So they grow, there's a Western, a Mexican. There's several types that grow here wild. So mm-hmm. once they get rooted, yeah. you can almost ignore them. They don't get too big. They live right. a long time. Mm-hmm. They're kind of the bright blooms, spring blooms. Mm-hmm. They have great fall color. They got great big leaves uh, for shade. They're kind of everything you want for the they mountains are. of Arizona. They really are. Super tree for here. So check those out. Plus we have all the the old-fashioned ones as well. <laughs> old, I mean, forest <laughs> pansy. Old it's got a purple forest leaf. Pansy, you got yeah. Oklahoma's a traditional eastern red bud right. with, with a brighter flower, bigger, yeah. like a double flower. Mm-hmm. So there's lots. There's lots right. of them. But all of them grow well here. That is true. And then we also got, and we talked about the apple trees that had the braided yeah. brand, uh, braided neat. trunks. We got those, and that's a honey crisp and a gala. And they so they've Perfect. kind of braided them, twisted them around each other. Really neat. I, what a neat thing to have in the yard. No, you can't have one in our house. <laughs> we got enough. It's just yeah. like, but they are really cool. Although I bet you could grow that in a big pot. Oh yeah, one downstairs. I bet you could. Yeah, Ooh. maybe you could have one. We'll see. We'll They'll see. go quick. <laughs> <laughs> a braided fruit tree, like a braided, like a braided hair, but yeah. they tr- taking the trunks, and so you get this funky two two fruits on the same tree that grows up. Mm-hmm. I've never seen such a thing. How do they do this stuff? Who creates this stuff? Crazy gardeners. <laughs> um, we got some beautiful rhododendrons in huge. 
I mean, huge, almost as tall as I am. Huge. Yeah. Um, They're beautiful and all, you know, butted up. They're going to be starting to bloom fairly soon here. Just absolutely gorgeous. If you've got the right spot for a roadie, you need to put one in. So they kind of like that shaded, uh, very filtered light spot, but most of them are evergreen. Yeah. as well so just beautiful plants to put in people don't realize you can grow azaleas rhododendrons hydrangeas, uh, um, hydrangeas mm-hmm. but you can and right. the uh, the roadies are the true evergreens it's the hardy mm-hmm. variety they go down to minus 40 30 degrees something yeah. like that but they get that great big flower and deer rabbits javelina do not bother rhododendrons right. should be fine mm-hmm. just so- give them shade right Right. So check those out. we got the great big ones. And then we have some of the more dwarf varieties too. So if you have a smaller space to fill that's shady, you can put who, those in there. Who wants a dwarf in the yard? Well, Come sometimes on. you need smaller, smaller. plants. Yeah, okay. Next to, to the patio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking gnomes. <laughs> no, that's what you want. Uh, we also got uh, the peonies. We talked about peonies earlier. So we got a nice selection of peonies in. We also got, which is still dormant, but great time to plant some of the spireas, like the Renaissance yeah. spirea. Some of those more earlier spring blooming varieties yeah. are in. Uh, lots of forsythia. We got a lot of bloomerangs in. So I know last year some people didn't get their bloomerangs yeah. because they ran out. <laughs> So we've got a really nice selection of the dark purple and then the one that's pink um, scent and sensibility is the pink one and then the dark purple one. So those are our lilacs Mm -hmm. that repeat bloom two or three times a year. Uh, thus the name bloomerang lilac. Right. And main thing is they're just shorter. They don't get, right. they get maybe hip high. Mm-hmm. And so as a regular lilac gets well above head high, if it's a big shrub, these stay small. So you can have them wherever you want them now. Mm-hmm. So there again, fits into the yards in many, many different places. Uh, I think I mentioned the forsythia. So we've got a lot of those in as well. Um, I'm missing something. What I don't was know. I going to talk about? I would help you if I could. <laughs> you know, I did notice the barberries. I was putting those back. Oh, so barberries yeah. are really tough. Yeah. You know, r- shorter, mm-hmm. bright oranges, bright red uh, shrub. Gets about knee higher, so it depends on the model. But they were starting to leaf out here in the garden center. So they're yeah. starting. You can see the very leaves. Not, not big leaves, but you can right. see they broke bud. And mm-hmm. now they've got tiny foliage. And by the time they get done, give them a month, they'll be... This solid orange Mm -hmm. shrub that just glows out in the yard. So that brings up a good point. So I've had people worried that, oh, they're starting to leaf. Can I still plant it? I know we got cold. I just say, yeah, they're fine. They like the cold. They like the cold. So don't worry about it. It's better to get them in the ground Mm -hmm. while they're, I mean, before they fully leaf out. So they just adapt better when their roots are in the ground in your yard waiting there. So you really do. There, There should be some urgency. Mm-hmm. With things like fruit trees, shade trees, you, you mentioned the red buds, right. uh, grapes, berries, things that are deciduous. They haven't quite leafed. They're about to. They're starting to wake up. You should really, really get those in the ground. It's not that you can't plant them after they're fully leafed. I mean, we sell a lot right. more grapes when they've got full leaves and grape clusters on them. Right. But it's better to put them in before they wake up. So wake up on our, your timing Uh, There's less transplant shock. There's a lot of benefits to Mm -hmm. planting early. Anyway. Yeah. One of the other things we got in that I thought was kind of cool is a raspberry shortcake. Oh, blueberry? No, it's a raspberry. 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 Sorry, I was thinking. (laughs) I don't know what I was thinking. What thinking? But instead of brambling, like most of your raspberries do, this one creates more like a shrub type thing. So great for containers. Uh, smaller spaces there again it'd be great that's in now i missed that so i'm sure i unloaded i'm sure to get the scars (laughs) on my hands for it i just didn't they're all tied up and they're it's kind of load the loading dock is a mess when those trucks come in there's stakes everywhere there's tie tape everywhere but it's when you get all done you go what just happened like a bomb went off but uh no it's a it's a plant bomb So lots of new things, a lot of conifer, new conifers in, um, you know, if you've been waiting, now is the time to come check out the availabilities. So you're saying if you've been waiting, stop it. Stop waiting. You can plant. You're in the planting season. We're here. The ground is not frozen. You can put things in, go for it. 
Uh, water them right now until they leaf out oh, every 10, 14 days. Okay. Keep it moist. Mm -hmm. Once they leaf out, water them uh, once or twice a week at that point. Mm -hmm. And then you're good to go. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Ken and Lisa Lane, The Mountain Gardeners. Be right back after this. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants of February are Calgary Carpet Juniper, Lily the Valley, Pinion Pines, and Peony. Your grandmother would fall in love with these larger peony with so many colors to choose from. There's nothing like the enormous flowers to add stunning pops of color. Endearing springtime blooms are more than fragrant with luscious double flowers. Shop the most perennial peonies in Prescott by store or online at watersgardencenter.com. Once upon a time, Fred the Sage and Bob the Yucca watched a herd of deer eat their neighbor's garden. Hey, Bob, said Fred. It's a good thing we're native Arizona plants from Waters Garden Center. Right, Fred, said Bob. We can handle tough Prescott dirt, hot sun, low water, and we look great in the garden. You betcha, Bob, said Fred. Hummingbirds and bees love us, but that deer sure doesn't. Be like Fred and Bob. Go native at Waters Garden Center. Safe, natural, and organic. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. As soon as this snow starts to dissipate, just the second it clears off, the second you see the soil, the planting season is upon us, just like that. Now, it will be the cool season things, things that like cold nights, bright days. That's all of your spring blooming plants. That would be rhododendrons, azaleas, all the way down to, to uh, forsythia, flowering quince. We just got a new flowering quince. Draw hardy, tough plant with a double orange flower. Super pretty. Uh, all the lilacs. It, don't wait when this happens. When you get them, they're, they're dormant. So they're basically, uh, they're deciduous. That is, they, they have great fall color, all of these plants. When they're done with their fall color, aspen golds or purples, reds, then they'll shed their leaves and they sit there in twig like state. I mean, they, some of them have very interesting bark on them, like a, a burning bush, super interesting cork-like bark, even without foliage. It's very interesting. Some of them have white bark, like aspens. They're very pretty with or without leaves, but that's considered deciduous. With your deciduous plants, it's best to plant those before they go into bloom, before they leaf out. So if you can get those in the ground before they, 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 they have that tender new growth, you'll find that you have more success, uh, less stress on that plant. That tender new growth, it's so tender, so thin, so soft that it, 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 if it stresses out at all, it just fades or tears or bruises. And so if you can put that in the ground before it wakes up, you have far less uh, damage or risk of, of stress on that, on that foliage. More importantly, things like lilac, your blooming plants like uh, rhododendrons and those, those kinds of things, they are, they'll get stressed out when you plant them when they're in bloom. They'll actually shed their their flowers. They'll do. I'm stressed out. I know I was in bloom. I know that's the reason you took me home. I know I I smelled really good, but I'm just stressed here. I'm not. I don't even know where I'm at. This is not. I'm not sure if I like this planting hole you gave me. And so to to mitigate the stress of the plant, the internal stress, it will just stop blooming. Just it'll instantly shrivel up. Let those things go. The foliage will stay intact most often. But the, the flowers will go, well, the reason you bought a lilac was for the fragrance and the color. And so if you just put it in before it wakes up, you don't have any of that stress. When it blooms, you get the maximum bloom cycle on that, which should be for lilacs probably about four to six weeks. They bloom a month, a little over a month. 
something like that is how long they bloom. There are some varieties coming out of lilac that bloom repeatedly, much like a rose does. You know, roses, they look really amazing April, May. That's when they put that first flush of blooms. Then it takes a break. Usually you'll deadhead it or trim it or depending on the variety, sometimes it prunes itself back. Then it flushes another set of flowers. Then it takes a break, rests. Then it sets more flowers. There's new lilacs coming out that do the exact same thing. Some blues, some reds. I think we've got a white repeat. There's several repeat blooming lilacs. And some new interesting dwarfed varieties. You know, lilac, that's a very large plant. And so it it easily gets oh, above head high. Now, now in Arizona, where it's really a dry climate, what you'll find is that plants grow shorter. They don't get to their full potential. So you folks in the Midwest, you're used to lilacs being <laughs> 20 feet tall. They just don't get that big here. Whatever that label says on the plant, if you, as you're shopping plants, this is for all elevations. Whoever's tuned in, in Arizona at least, uh, the plants are going to be 20, 25 percent shorter, smaller in breadth, width, height, in every dimension. It's going to be smaller because of the aridness, the dryness, the sun, just the sheer intensity of the sun seems to me the, the foliage will be smaller. Uh, the, the flowers will be sh smaller, maybe more of them, but smaller, uh, and they just won't grow as tall. And so lilacs here in the mountains of Arizona, maybe 10 feet tall, if you just let them go, they can be twice that in the Midwest where they're just growing wild. They're almost a weed. Here they're going to be shorter. That goes for maples. That goes for any kind of plant that you've grown in other areas. You come here and because of the elevation, the short days, the, the, the temperature swings, the 10% humidity that's about to hit us in, in uh, May and June seems to make things pint size. That goes for fruit trees. You're used to apricots that grow 25 feet tall. Well, they're only going to grow 18 here. So they're going to be smaller by 20, 25%. There's no real science to that. But, but a gardener, when we're, when we're rowing, you know, looking around at other gardens, we go, hey, I know that. The book says that grows 25 feet, but this is a fully mature one. It's only 18. So you just see this play out in, in local landscapes. And it doesn't seem to be if it's a north or south facing garden or, you know, 6,000 foot or 5,000 foot. It just seems to be northern Arizona. That's the way it plays out. Lilacs are a natural though. That's one plant that every yard should have at least one. And here's the reason why. They're very deep rooted. They've got, so that makes them drought hardy. Animals seem to leave them alone, but generally speaking, so deer and rabbits and javelina, uh, pack rats, things, you know, porcupines we've got. We've had incidents of people coming in going, something's eating the bark on the bottom part of my tree. What is it? Porcupine. No, it can't be. I've never seen one. I'm going, okay, here we go again. It's a porcupine. It can't be. I'm telling you, only one thing peels the bark off at the bottom of the tree like that. Porcupine. Okay, how, what do I do? Well, you just wrap it up. You just, they don't bother lilac. And so no matter the variety, now a quick lesson on lilac. There's basically three different types. That's it. All light. Now, there's different colors, but it's going to be one of these types. There is your common lilac. This is the kind of lilac that your grandmother grew. Generally, it's purple, a darker purple. It's, it's very fragrant, gets very large, very fast grower, very deep rooted, very drought hardy, very tough. It's a great plant. They've got variations of that. They're coming out with new colors because, let's face it, just purple kind of boring. So we've got yellows and, and whites and light blues and sky blues and dark blues and light purples. And there's different colors. Even reds can come out of that, but they're all common lilacs. Same size, get like eight, 10 feet tall, six feet wide, big, big vase shaped, big flowers. The second type is French lilacs. Like, oui, oui, it's a French lilac. There we go. Uh, that was a terrible, to my French friends, I apologize terribly for that terrible accent, but 
That's the closest I can do. I mean, I can't help it. Um, French lilacs are very exotic. You get the really rich, intense, like vibrant colors with this. They are bred for the beauty. I mean, you just want to pick them, put them in a vase, and paint them. You just want to, they're just gorgeous. But they don't have the fragrance that the common lilacs do. So look for that. Is it a common lilac or is this a French lilac? So your bright reds, your bright blues, these are going to be French lilacs. Then you've got an entire series of dwarfed lilacs. These are just lower care. I mean, you, you'll never have to prune these. They bloom, many of them, repeatedly. They'll bloom two, three times per year. Same fragrance as the common lilacs. Very fragrant, but they only get hip high or so. So that's the beauty. We're trying to introduce more of those because yards are becoming smaller and people don't have room for a 10-foot shrub. You know, it's a beast off the side of their house or off the back patio. They need something smaller. And so we're introducing more and more dwarfed plants like lilacs, butterfly bush. Uh, even I've got a dwarfed forsythia. Who's ever heard of such a thing? It only gets a foot tall. Truly dwarf. I've got a, one that only gets two feet tall, one that only gets four feet tall, then the traditional forsythia, forsythia that gets head high. So we're trying to introduce more and more and more varieties. So those are your types. Common lilac, French lilacs, and your dwarfed series of lilacs. They're all equally as hardy. There's not one better than the other. You're going to shop those by how tall do I want it to be, what color do I like, and then that's pretty much it. That's how you shop for lilacs. And all are available at the garden centers now. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. It's almost spring. Time to grow a pear. A pear tree, that is. Late winter is ideal for planting fruit trees. At Waters Garden Center has cherry-picked the hardiest, heaviest producing trees from our most trusted growers. From apples to apricots and persimmons to pears, the garden center is plumb full of varieties that thrive in our mountain soil. And we'll even plant them for you. We believe life is a bowl of cherries, so grow the best ones ever from Waters Garden Center in Prescott. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Safe, natural, organic fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So I'm not going to promote the garden classes anymore. So they are, we just are overwhelmed. Last week it was on fruit trees and we had 60, 60, 70 people there in the greenhouse, standing room only with another 50 or 60 online watching it live stream. So I'm not going to promote that. If you want it, if you've got interest or that's something that tickles your fancy, go to our website, watersgardencenter.com uh, or, or the Facebook page under events. You know where to, you know where to find it. Anyway, uh, we got a bunch of trees in this week, and they're mainly the deciduous trees. Well, not all. We've got quite a few spruce and pine, lots of really big, pretty pine trees. But the deciduous trees, the deciduous uh, fruit trees, these are plants that lose their leaves. These are the shade trees, the blooming trees of spring, the, the red buds and the crab apples, the service berries. You, you know who they are. They're really pretty, they're heavily budded, and they're starting to swell. You can see them actively uh, growing right now. So they are getting ready to explode into their spring flower. By sometime in March, it's all going to let loose and things are going to bloom like crazy. I've been talking to folks about the trees here at the garden center, and I wanted to describe a, a good quality tree and, and what you're looking for 
when you're buying a good quality tree. And there are bad quality, and there are good quality, and there's everything in between. So we tend to specialize in the artistry of the trees. This is the shape, the canopy, the, the way it's going to grow up. These beautiful trees, when they're beautiful when they're small, they grow up into beautiful trees. If a tree is ugly when they're small, there ain't no way to fix that dog. It's just ugly. The bigger it gets, the uglier it gets. So you really do want to hand pick those trees, whether it's an evergreen or, or deciduous, but especially those bigger shade trees like maples and aspens and birch. And there, there are just dozens of them. Uh, what are you looking for? So what we'll do is we'll grow the trees in a field and then we'll pull them up. We'll grow them for about I don't know, five years or so in a field like like corn. Then we'll go in and harvest those and we'll bare root them. That is, there's no soil. We're just getting them out of the ground in those farms. And then we'll put them into a can, a bucket, a, a grower's pot. And so as that tree grows, we're shaping it. We're grooming it, as it to, to get it where it has the scaffolding, the, the shapeliness to it. Many trees are grafted. In fact, all of our trees here at Waters Garden Center are grafted trees. That is, we'll take a rootstock, and we're trying to take a rootstock that handles heavy clay, and then we're grafting the desired tree onto that hardier rootstock. So there's a graft right there at the ground. You'll see a, a little knob or, or kind of a, a stub there, and that's the graft. And that's, that was grafted five years ago. As it grows, if you just take a hardy rootstock and you just let that tree just grow right now, it's really hardy, you can get what we call as a whip, a real thin, tall tree. So you've got to head it or top it or limb it at the top. So we're cutting some of the top off to force that energy into the trunk so we get a nice, thick, chubby trunk. As we start to finish off that tree the last couple of years, we're now grafting actually the outer tips. So at the top of a good quality tree, you'll see a little band-aid looking like, like white grafting tape. And that's where we're cutting that long, let's say a locust. It focuses all of its energy on this one branch and all of it goes out there. Well, we'll, we'll cut that off to give it some shape, but then we'll take that tip and graft it someplace else so we can control that growth, so we get better, stronger growth with a good, thick trunk. And that's that's what you're looking for. So if you see some Band-Aid looking grafting tape up towards the top especially, that's actually very desirable. An artist has been, been working this tree for probably, we've got some trees that are 10, 15 years old. They're, they're instantaneous trees. I mean, you put them in the yard, it looks like it's been growing there for 10 years because it's like 10 years old. So look for that and you'll see that shapeless. But basically, don't buy ugly trees. They just get uglier as they grow. <laughs> okay, that's the advice this week. That's a wrap for The Mountain Gardeners. Have a good week, everyone. Some things are just better together. March is the best time to fertilize with all-purpose plant food from Waters Garden Center. But pair the all-purpose with humic acid, and it's a one-two punch of garden power. Humic acid gives your soil organic matter that helps plants' roots receive water and nutrients. So it makes fertilizer work even better. Like salt and pepper. Coffee and donuts. And hey, you and me. Aw, Thanks, Ken. All-purpose plant food and humic acid, better together and only at Waters Garden Center. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.